Uh, I'd like to welcome up uh, Marta Belcher, who is the president and chair of the Filecoin Foundation, and Zach Seward, who is deputy news editor at Coindesk. So welcome, Zach and Marta, and uh, please take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so gigabytes and stuff are cool, but we actually have the privilege to talk about space right now, which is really awesome. Who doesn't like to geek out about space? So this is going to be a fun conversation. Um, Aaron kind of gave us the TLDR, but I want to ask, in case anyone here is unfamiliar with what the news is that we're discussing, what is this space thing that you are doing, Marta? Well, so a couple weeks ago at, in Davos during the World Economic Forum, the Filecoin Foundation announced that we are working with Lockheed Martin to bring IPFS, the interplanetary file system, to space. Okay, so yeah, it's going right? to space. Like, I mean, <laughs> okay. come Woo. on, right? We love space. Okay, why space, Marta? What is this really all about? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, um, really from the beginning, IPFS was envisioned as a technology that could make interplanetary networking possible, right? That's why it's called the interplanetary file system. And so if you think about it, today's centralized internet model just doesn't work in space. So like imagine you're, you're on the moon or you're a satellite and you're trying to get data from, from Earth, right? On today's centralized internet model, you're retrieving data from a specific server in a particular location. And so if that server is on Earth, then every time you need to retrieve that data, you're gonna have to go back and forth to Earth every single time, right? Um, and so that really just doesn't scale in space where you have a multi-second delay if you wanna be, let's say you're on the moon, multi-second delay. Let's say you're on or near Mars, multi-minute delay. It just doesn't work, it doesn't scale. And so what IPFS allows you to do is rather than retrieve content by where it is, you can retrieve content by what it is, which means if someone nearby has already retrieved that content, you can get it from somewhere much closer. You're going to get that content for where, from wherever's closer rather than a particular server on Earth. And that works in space. And so that's why this was designed as a way to make interplanetary networking possible. Okay. That, I mean, so first of all, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask you many questions because this is very fun. <laughs> Uh, I want to get to what this thing is going to look like. For, I, I want to get there. I want to get to the logistics. But first of all, I want to step back. And I want to talk about some of these grand terms that you're using, right? You talk about this thing as though it is a major thing, as though the space economy is real. Can you talk to me about what this is all headed toward as it relates to building a vibrant economy in space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, I really think um, when we were announcing this, uh, in Davos, uh, we were up with the vice president of Lockheed, Joe Landon, and he talks a lot about his vision for the future space economy. Um, and he really sees a future where um, there's a lot of um, private companies that are interoperating, um, a, a lot of, there's really a whole economy that's based in space. It's not reliant on, on Earth. And so you really need Keith would say, you really need this economy where you have infrastructure that isn't reliant on Earth. You actually have communications infrastructure in space. And so that's really the vision for this future space economy where IPFS can sort of serve as the communications layer. How far are we talking here? How many years, decades, centuries? What, when you talk to the gigabrains over at Lockheed, what are they saying in terms of when this is going to happen? Look, I mean, I think the, the broader space economy is already thriving. I mean, if you actually look at it, it's not something that's actually far out. You've already got so many services that are based in space. You know, just look at Starlink, right, as one example, um, and the recent uses of Starlink in Ukraine. So this actually isn't necessarily so, this isn't science, fic science fiction. This is happening now. Okay, good point, well played. All right, so uh, we went from the distant, that's great, thank you. Let's go to the particulars. And I know that a lot of this stuff is in the works, so I'm not gonna hold you to it, but what does this actually look like, right? We're talking about nodes somewhere in space delivering data somewhere to somewhere else in space. Physically, when we're talking about this, what are we talking about? 
Yeah, so absolutely. So, you know, and we can talk also a little bit about how IPFS works and why it makes sense as sort of the basis. Um, but, you know, I think what we, what we have in mind here is really exploring with Lockheed, okay, we know that IPFS enables, um, through its content addressing, enables you to actually be able to retrieve content from wherever's closest, right? And so that it doesn't just have one potential implication for the space economy, that has tons of potential implications, right? So whether that's ground to satellite, satellite to satellite, moon, you know, lunar, lunar stations to satellite, planet. This is really about um, having a communication system that isn't reliant on going back and forth from one place constantly. Wow, that's all right. Busy content, I think right? I think we're back. Sorry about that. Good? We're gonna cut that out of the video, so don't worry, don't worry. Um, <laughs> uh, so. I think that, frankly, I think I was done with that, so. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so I, I do want to go back to the broader fascination with space. Crypto specifically seems to geek out on space fairly often, right? We have the Blockstream satellite, we had like Space Chain, now we have IPFS in space. I want to pick your brain. Why do crypto people love space so much? Well, look, I would argue, I don't know about other crypto projects, but when it comes to our crypto projects, we certainly do use a lot of space imagery. But to be clear, we actually did design this for space, <laughs> right? This isn't actually something that is, we're just pulling out of the woodwork. This actually was designed and named to be a thing that would, would enable this interplanetary communication. Um, and so, in, in my view, uh, we are completely justified in our uh, mild obsession with space imagery. All right, pop quiz, what's your, face, what's your favorite like space thing from culture? Star Wars, Star Trek, other, do you have any particular ones that you're a fan of? Oh man, um, you know, honestly, I'm, I think I'm a big fan of, uh, like, it, just thinking back, like, I've always been really inspired by, by space, and as I think many people are, and, you know, I think thinking back to um, my childhood, um, I can recall particularly being fascinated with the International Space Station. Um, and so really, it's like not even sci-fi, it's like reality is so inspiring to me. Like, if we're already in space, there's already so much interesting stuff happening there. And to me, it is so inspiring that we can be part of the communications infrastructure of space in the future. Got it. So is, the, is there a potentiality for this technology to be on the International Space Station? Is that in the cards, potentially? So I would say right now we are in the early, so like just to, you know, be sort of level setting, where we are right now is we're really in the exploratory phase with Lockheed Martin, where what we're doing is we're looking at a demonstration mission. And so we're really looking at the basics. We're looking at, okay, you know, for a demonstration mission to show how IPFS works in space, um, do we want to do that as ground to satellite? Do we want to do that lunar? You know, what makes sense? Satellite to satellite. There are all sorts of different options because, as I mentioned, there's so many different ways that this technology can actually be used in space. So that's one of the things we're actually identifying. Certainly in the future, I think the idea is that if this is the basis of communications technology um, in space as part of the space, tech, the space economy, then what you'll actually have is, you know, IPFS all over space. And that's kind of the point, right? Is that you're going to have nodes on satellites, they're going to be, things are going to be moving around. And the, the whole point is that whenever you're looking for data, you can get that data from somewhere nearby. Got it. So, you know, you mentioned that this has been a long time coming. It's sort of part of the original vision for what this is all about. But obviously you need like big partners to make this happen, right? Like Juan isn't like building a rocket ship right now to go like drop off a node on the moon probably. I mean, I don't know, maybe, but Talk to me about what like Lockheed brings to the table here. Were they like an eager partner? Is this their first blockchain adventure? Talk to me about that side of the equation as it relates to bringing a big corporate entity on board with the vision. Yeah, honestly, we are so grateful to Lockheed Martin um, and particularly to Joe Landon. Um, Joe Landon is the Vice President of Advanced Programs Development at Lockheed, um, and he really gets it. Um, he was actually the CFO of Planetary Resources, um, which was acquired by Consensus. Um, and so he, re and, and he and I actually met in 2018 at Consent, at, at uh, uh, at the Consensus Conference, which he was at because he was, you know, at the time had, was being inquired by Consensus, other Consensus. Consensus, why Consensus with a U, it's a little confusing. What was that? Just the Y and the U distinction. Just. 
Right, exactly, exactly. And the why you distinction. But um, he really understood. He really, he really got it from the beginning. Um, and he really has this vision for the future space economy. And he really understands that, y that there is this problem with today's communications models, that the centralized communication model really doesn't work in space. And so he really saw this as an opportunity. And so we're so grateful to him for really pushing this forward um, and being such a visionary. Um, and, and Lockheed has just been absolutely fantastic. And the thing that they bring to the table is really all of the, the space expertise, right? You know, right now what we're working on with them is really figuring out, okay, so, you know, what is the hardware? We're going to be using Lockheed Martin hardware to put IPFS in space. What is the hardware we're going to use? Based on the hardware that we're using, what do we need to do in terms of, of software to make sure that this works, right? Do we need another implementation? Like, what do we need to do here? Um, and, and really also to identify with us what is the right mission as a demonstration mission, right? And I think we're going to be pretty opportunistic there. You know, they have the expertise on, okay, what are the missions that, where we can really get a payload going and, and what is the right timeline? And that's really the phase we're in right now. And they are just bringing so much to the table uh, for making this happen. Okay, cool. So that, yeah, that is interesting. So like, obviously it's early stages, right? But do you have sort of a rubric for what a successful demo mission looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the idea is we want to be able to show how IPFS can really uh, uh, reduce the latency that you see with today's space communications, right? So, you know, as I've mentioned, when you have to go back and forth to a centralized server, um, you're, you're constantly get taking delays. And so for us to be able to actually demonstrate, look, if you use our technology, um, there's actually going to be way, way, way decreased latency because you're able, I think that in and of itself, being able to demonstrate that is going to be, is going to be huge. Um, and it's really, I think, the vision that Joe and I both see. Got it. So the speed gains are really what it's all about here. Okay. That makes sense. All right. We're going to do the real good questions, Marta. Speed round. Aliens or no aliens? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, my God. Um, look, I mean... <laughs> you're on the record here. Is this I'm being recorded? I'm on the record here. Yeah. Okay. Um, look, I mean... I think, of course, fundamentally, like, I, I don't think that we're alone in this vast universe, right? I mean, like, um, I don't know if they're in cornfields, but uh, I mean, I just want to say I'm not an expert, and, and really, you should be asking, you should really be asking Lockheed these questions, because I think they'll have, uh, they'll have a lot more, uh, more thoughts. We'll get you up here next time. All right, I learned before the panel that you wanted to be a space lawyer uh, growing up. Is that, what does that even mean? I did. I'm honestly one of the reasons that I'm so excited about this project and have been so excited about working on it um, is I'm a lawyer by training. Um, and there was this moment in law school where I knew I wanted to be a technology lawyer. And I, I really was interested in space. Um, and this actually really relates to kind of this future space economy. Because at the time, if you wanted to go into space, what you would have to do is really go to the government or a government contractor, right? Those were your options. Um, and so I actually had, uh, you know, was considering for the summer my first year of law school, either interning at Apple or at NASA, right? Again, there just there wasn't SpaceX, there weren't these other options, there wasn't a private space economy the way there is today. Um, and I ended up choosing to go with Apple, and sort of that put me on the path to becoming a cryptocurrency lawyer and then um, uh, being all cryptocurrency all the time. Um, but I think that that, you know, it, it really kind of goes to show you how much we have evolved, how much the space economy has evolved, right? That now, if, if there were a first-year law student who wanted to be a space lawyer, they wouldn't be like, okay, well, I can go work at NASA um, or a government contractor. They actually have all these cool options, right? I mean, they could come work for the Filequin Foundation for, you know, for goodness sakes, right? Um, we have cool space projects for them to work on. Um, or they could go, they could go to SpaceX or, either, I mean, then there's tons of crypto space projects that they could be working on. So I think it really shows how we've, we've really evolved and I feel so lucky to be, in fact, a lawyer who gets to work on, on space stuff. We love the space stuff. All right, last question. I think, you know, based on your understanding of where this project is at, based on your conversations with Lockheed, when we're talking about this sort of how to make the space economy work, what are sort of the other fundamental technologies that you think people in this room and elsewhere should be considering at the nexus of blockchain and space? 
Well, you know, I really think that fundamentally the, the word that we're hearing when we're talking about the space economy with Lockheed is infrastructure, right? The, the idea here is that they're trying to build infrastructure in space so that you have a thriving space economy that isn't reliant on Earth. Um, and so from a crypto perspective and from particularly um, with IPFS, I think that the thing that is so exciting is being part of that fundamental infrastructure layer for the space economy, right? We're not talking about a one-off use case. We're talking about being part of the infrastructure. And that is so exciting. All right, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> Me too. Oh, I could tell, that's good. It's good that you're bringing the excitement. It's good that you're getting to live out these space lawyer dreams of your youth. So that's fantastic to you. All right, well, join me in thanking Marta. She's been great to talk to. Uh, hope you're having a good day here. And I'm gonna pass it back to Aaron or someone. I'm gonna pass it over and we're gonna see what's next. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, Marta. So fun. Thanks, Zach, that was great. Yeah.